is a presentation of Fox Sports. We are Fox We are Southeast. Last night, Atlanta's youth movement stole the show. Matt Whistler tossed a one-hit masterpiece. And rookie outfielder Malik Smith turned a Matt Harvey fastball into his first career homer. Today, Julius Chassie digs in, opposing New York's young gun Steven Matz. It's a getaway day matinee. It's the Braves and Mets on Fox Sports Southeast. It's in the offing in New York City today as the Braves wrap up a three game set here on a frosty day for baseball at City Field. The wind is blowing straight in. It is gray. It is misty. It is raw. But the Braves don't care. They're open to win on getaway day here in Flushing, New York. Hi again, friends. Chip and Joe, welcome back to the ballpark. The age old question How do you top a pitching masterpiece like the one turned in by Matt Whistler last night? Eight innings of one hit ball. Well, Julius Chassin's going to try. He gets the ball for the Braves today. The only thing for Julius Chassin today, I think, is just pitch deep in the ball game. That's something that's been problematic for him in his first few starts, and he got a win his last time out on this road trip. He's been pitching good baseball for the Braves. But again, he hasn't been able to finish up a sixth inning yet. He's got good stuff, sinking, cutting, both sides of the plate. Hopefully that action is still working for him today. His record one and one is three road starts, one and oh with a 276 ERA. But he's going to have a tough opponent on the other side. And he'll try to snap a couple of streaks. The Mets have won five straight series, and Steven Matz has won three straight decisions for New York. Well, he has already set a Mets record for seven wins in his first 10 career starts. So if you think about the pitchers that have come through this organization, that's pretty high cotton for a young left-hander out of Stony Brook, New York. He pitched against the Braves in Atlanta. He won that game. But these last three starts, now as well as he's pitched, he's been given 27 runs of support in those three games. I think you and I might have had a shot at winning those games. Well, you for sure. I'm pretty sure I'd have no shot. Braves do have a shot, though. They'll try to take two out of three in New York. Pitching has been the story, and we'll talk about that as the Braves' future and current present looking awfully good here in New York.
Baseball is presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Right stuff, low price every day. Welcome back to a cold day here in New York as the Braves try to take the series versus the Mets. And you know, the Braves are working on polishing a young pitching rotation. And when I spoke to Freddie Gonzalez, he said coming into the season, he just wanted them to get better, and they really have. And that takes us to our Zaxby's indescribably good play. Look at these numbers. In the last five games, they're three and two, but check out that ERA, 2.12, a sub three ERA from your collection of pitchers. You can't really ask for much more than that. And I spoke to the guy who's been catching them behind the dish, A.J. Przinski, on what he's seeing from them. Most of them are really young still, um, and they're just getting better, uh, more confident, um, belief in themselves, uh, and they're just learning how to pitch at this level. Uh, you look at Whistler, he's gotten better since last year. He continues to improve, and then, you know, Fulte obviously had a bad first inning, came out back after that. shashin has been good for us all year. Julio, the last two starts, has been awesome. Uh, guys are just getting better, and that's what you look forward during the season, and uh, hopefully it'll continue to get better, and hopefully we can score some runs for them and get some wins. So the Braves hope to keep it going today with Julius Shasheen on the bump today, who has been solid so far this season. We have the series finale of the Braves versus the Mets, a rubber match coming up, starting lineups and first pitch right after the break. Sponsored by Georgia's Best Chevy Dealers. Back in New York for the Braves and the Mets. The series wrap up here at City Field. As we have told you several times, it's bitterly cold. 51 degrees, winds out of the east at 17 miles an hour. Forecast is cloudy, but with a good chance of rain in the middle hours of the afternoon. So let's get this one in the wind column quickly. Yeah, it's not so much the temperature. It, you know, 51 degrees wouldn't be so bad if the sun was out. Yeah. But the dampness that the team has played in since the beginning of this road trip, we were just talking before we came back from the break that we haven't seen the sun since we started this road trip in Boston. And it has been damp and rainy and in addition to being chilly all along. So here's a look at the Braves batting order. Malik Smith gets the start for Atlanta in center and the leadoff spot. Nick Markakis is not with the team today. Nick had a family emergency that he had to deal with today back in the Atlanta area. Nick is expected to be back in the lineup Friday when the Diamondbacks come to town. So the Braves playing a man short and Malik Smith is in the first spot against Stephen Matz. And we're underway a strike. 
49 degrees officially announced on the PA here in New York with that brisk wind. And Malik's behind nothing in two. And another young pitcher pitching without any long sleeves on. This guy's got a good hook. Fastball is 93 to 95, but there is the problem for him. Lefties. That's poked down the left field line. And no play for Michael Conforto. This year, left-handers, you saw the career numbers. This year, they're 11 for 24 against him. Right-handers hitting 241. So the left-handers take away some of his ability to use his uh, his running fastball, and he's not able to throw that curveball to the back foot like he does to the right-handers. One ball, two strikes for Alex. And he took a fastball right down Broadway, and we're underway with a called strike three. Jim Wolf balls and strikes today. Too close to take. Matt has yet to give up a first inning run. Let's see if Garcia can take care of that. That one pops out of the glove of Rene Rivera, who's Matz's battery mate today. Bonus back at third base for the Braves. And 92 on the corner. That'll work. One ball, one strike. On Mats a minute ago is really worth repeating. Seven and one in his first ten decisions as a Met. More wins in the first ten than any other pitcher they've ever developed. His first ten starts. Think about that. Gooden, Darling, Seaver, and on and on. Adonis Garcia here in the first. He was on the disabled list for a little bit of time last year that had them worried. He had a, a lat muscle that was injured, but he came back strong, pitched well in the postseason. Six two, two hundred pounds. Great at bat. Jonas Garcia about to see a ninth pitch. And he swings and misses. Two up, two down. Couple of strikeouts for Steven Matz. He hasn't had to use his defense yet. Conforto, Cespedes, and Granderson in the outfield. Wilmer Flores gives David Wright the day off, day game after the night game. And Rene Rivera, as we told you, is in harness behind the plate. Here's Freddie Freeman. As cold as this weather has been in Chicago, Boston, and New York, Freddie Freeman's bat is heating up. He's had an excellent road trip. Four doubles and two homers among his ten hits. Is that just missed? One ball, two strikes. That's his feeling good. He's working fast. To third, Wilmer Flores gets the friendly hop. 
And throws a strike to first. Mats gets the Braves in order. Julius Chassis goes to work in a scoreless game in New York. either as he gets set to face the Mets for the second time this year. And here is Chassin's work. Three road starts have been his best work. 276 ERA 242 average against him. His start against New York came in Atlanta. Five and two thirds innings seven hits four runs. Two walks five strikeouts as I said in their opening comments. One of the Ford keys for him today is to stretch it out. Try to pitch a little deeper in the ball game. He's yet to complete a sixth inning and repeat. Repeat what he saw last night and that is hold the Mets off early in the game and give the Braves a chance to get on the board. The Mets have scored 21 first inning runs this year. None last night of course as Curtis Granderson leads things off. And that's in for a strike to the Mets right fielder who's batting 229 for the year. Just missed inside. One ball, two strikes. Braves have a shift on for Granderson. Garcia, the lone man on the left side of the diamond, as Granderson digs in. And he'll have a seat. Swing and a miss. So Chassin gets his first man on this Mets lineup card. Mr. Rubel Cabrera's next, then Michael Conforto hitting third. Cespedes, Duda, Walker. Flores, Rivera, and Mats in seventh, eighth, and ninth. That's hitting 250 as a club. They've outscored their opponents by 36 runs in their first 27 games. Here's the only man that had a hit. Against Matt Whistler last night is Dribble Cabrera, the shortstop. Right back where it came from, that'll be easy. There's the second out. Braves had a very good game defensively. A lot of hard hit balls, and the outfield was busy, but they tracked them all down. Frank Coor gets the start in left, Darno gets the start for Marquecas in right. Lefty on the mound means Tyler Flowers is behind the plate. Daniel Castro is in at second. Chance to come home and make this a really good road trip. A winning road trip with a win today. Splits in Boston and Chicago. And we'll split of the first two here. A strike to Michael Conforto. 
He's been moved to the three spot on the lineup card and he has broken out 14 RBIs 13 runs in his last 15 games. Two balls and a strike. One of the good young hitters in the National League, and it's one of those guys that it just sounds different when it comes off his bat. Chassin pitching very carefully to Conforto. And now a dangerous pitch. Three balls and a strike. Looks like he walked through snow to get here today. Three and two. Who is low and in? And Chassin will go to the stretch for the first time as Conforto walks with two outs. And that'll bring up Yoenis Cespedes. Walks have not been an issue for Julie. It's only the fifth walk. In 23 innings, the league's hitting 259 against him coming in. He's been around the plate. Interesting note on Chassin before the game today. He's one of two pitchers in our league that have pitched 20 innings or more and have yet to allow a homer. The other is Joe Ross of the Nationals. Keep these Mets in the ballpark. That's doing good work. They've hit 34 homers in their last 17 games. And Cespedes has had a big hand in that. He's hit three bombs in his last six. And that's high. One ball, no strikes. Cespedes wants to know if that was a call on the location or on the swing. Looked like on the pitch. Usually the umpire will point at the hitter if he's letting us know that it was on the swing. Breaking ball popped up, foul ground. There's a lot of it. Freeman takes a peek in front of the Mets dugout, and Cespedes and the Mets are done after a scoreless first. Jeff Francoeur will go to work. We head to the second inning. Kids have come out to City Field for Weather Day, and they like gray skies. They've it's perfect. It's yeah. perfect for them. 
They're all bundled up as Jeff Francoeur digs in. These are the kinds of games for which the Braves signed Jeff, as you see on our Academy Sports and Outdoors leaderboard. Highest average against lefties so far this year. Jeff Francoeur in there at fourth place. Hoping to have a big day today. Little cue shot. Mats will field, turn in, fire to first. One out. Four up, four down for the Mets left hander. That brings up Tyler Flowers, the Braves catcher, with a 250 mark and four runs batted in. The Mets are in just as big a hurry to get out of town as the Braves are. They start a long road trip to the West Coast after today's play. Braves are off tomorrow and have the Diamondbacks coming in this weekend. Mets looks very sharp here in the early going. Hitting that outside corner with his fastball. And the gun's saying 92, but it looks a lot faster than that. It's got some zip on it, I can tell you. He couldn't stop his swing. That's the third strikeout for Mets. And two are out. Here's Chase Darno, who had a base hit in his Braves debut last night. And he's got the start in right field. Those are Chase's career numbers. Seen him get on base again and get an opportunity to run. Darno was originally a fourth round pick by the Pirates back in 2008. Injuries have really sidetracked his career. Had a broken finger, a broken left thumb. Got to the big leagues in 2011, briefly in 2012, minor leagues all the way until 2014. And last year, Chase played in 11 games with the Phillies. And this one popped up on the infield. Cabrera behind the second base bag. Back pedals a bit, makes the play, and it's six up, six down for Steven Matz. No score. Home second coming up. Time for a look at greater coverage of baseball brought to you by T-Mobile. 
Diamondbacks come to town on Friday night for a weekend series. The Braves will get Zach Greinke Friday night, Shelby Miller Saturday, and Patrick Corbin on Sunday. Then the Phillies, the Red Hot Phillies, 10 and 2 their last 12 games, come in beginning next Tuesday after a day off on Monday. And their pitching leads all of baseball in strikeouts. You'd have won a lot of bets if you knew that trivia answer and asked your friends. Right. Which staff has the most strikeouts? It's the Phillies. We're off to a great start. And as Chassin turns it loose and throws a strike to Lucas Duda. One of their young pitchers had a big night last night, too, against the Cardinals, Aaron Nola. Duda couldn't stop himself. That cost him a strike. Nola struck out seven yesterday. Ryan Howard a home run. That's the only run in the game as they beat the Cardinals one nothing yesterday. And look at that ball back up and Duda frozen on a cold day. That's Julius's second strikeout. That looked like he came from even more than right over the top. Changed his arm angle just a little bit and got some great movement on him. There's a park where Julius has always pitched well in. One and one lifetime here at City Field with a 193 career ERA. And Walker pops up the first pitch. Garcia behind third. Walker joins him, but Adonis makes the shoulder high catch. He was about to whip that ball to Ibar standing behind the second base back yeah. and he was two feet away. <laughs> two up two down for Wilmer Flores and for David Wright today Wilmer off to a very slow start at the plate just four hits in his first thirty two tries. Three balls, no strikes. And ball four, a couple of two out walks for Chassin in the early going. And again, that's a rarity for him. Only went five innings in his win when he beat the Red Sox last time out. And some of that was because he was having to work pretty hard just to get through five innings, 91 pitches. And against these Mets at home, five and two thirds innings, 91 pitches. So maybe today's the day he can get over that hump. No score for Rivera, the Mets catcher, who's 0 for 3. Travis Darno, Chase's brother, is back in Port St. Lucie nursing a bum shoulder. It's still sore that so sore that he hasn't been able to throw a baseball yet. It's a rotator cuff strain for Travis Darno. The pitch is corked down the left field line. That ball is gone. Rivera hits a two run homer down the line with two outs. It doesn't matter who it doesn't matter where these Mets just keep slugging homers. Well I didn't expect the first homer hit off Julius Chassin this year to be hit by the Mets backup catcher. Who they just signed on April 6th after he got released. But that's the case. Rivera hooked it right down the line. And now 
Matz with a roller to first retires the side. A two out walk proves to be very costly. Rene Rivera hits a two run homer and the Mets jump in front. Baseball is sponsored by Delta Airlines, your local Ford dealer, and Xfinity. X1 from Xfinity will change the way you experience sports. Joe mentioned the Jackie Robinson Rotunda earlier in this series, and there's a beautiful look at it on a chilly day. Fans still filing in here to City Field for our series wrap up with Terry Collins and his New York Mets Braves now have to come from a two run deficit against Steven Matz who has set down the first six three via strikeout Terry Collins was complaining a little bit about the lack of production offensively from Plowecki the other backup catcher and all of a sudden he plugs in Rivera and instant offense. Daniel Castro leads off third. Eric Ibar, then Julius Chassin. It's a high strike. It's nothing in one. Daniels had a tough time of it at the plate on the road. A two for 18 trip. Hasn't been striking out a lot. He's been putting the ball in play. And there were some times where he's hit the ball sharply and had nothing to show for it. Good battle here with Daniel Castro this time. Took Matt's a long time to finally get to the big leagues. He lost two full seasons coming back from surgery 2010 and 2011. And he's got his fourth strikeout, and he's off to a flying start in the third inning. That's at least the second, if not the third. The Braves hit her to walk away from home plate a little disgusted, too. And Wolf's got a generous zone, it appears. Seven up, seven down for Ibar. Who's batting 172. And a bounding ball foul at third. Match was a second round pick in 2009. Out of Stony Brook, New York. To mention that. A bunt try. Matz pounces and throws a strike to first. 
And Duda had to dart out of the way at the last moment as Ibar's retired. Two I out. I can't believe he caught that ball. I thought he was getting out of the way early and yeah. hadn't caught it yet. A little closer to the line, he's probably got a base hit. Boy, he was straddling the base. Yeah, that's on Duda. His footwork yeah. was all messed up on uh -huh. that play. And a strike to Chassin. With the bases empty, 2 0 New York. Into center field, and Chassin has the first Braves hit. I don't think the Mets expected that to happen. I don't think they did either. And I remember when Mats pitched against the Braves in Atlanta. When they started getting to him for a couple of runs late in the ball game, he got real frustrated. He had some grimaces on his face, angry at himself for some mistakes he made, and he made one right there. He was a little disgust on his face. So now Malik Smith hits with the man aboard and two outs. Again, lefties have been hitting Mats awfully hard this year. Let's see what Malik's can do. He struck out his first time and is down a strike. Slow roller right side. Walker's got it. Duda to the bag. Close play. But Smith out by a quarter step to retire the side. Top of the order coming up for New York. Stephen Matz enjoys a 2 0 lead. Braves trail going into the bottom of the third and one of the new faces Chase Darno. we know that his brother is one of the catchers for the Mets he's on the DL but you know what he also has a band and you'll never guess the name it is the Chase Darno band they actually just released their debut EP he's the lead singer and guitarist they just started up in December so I think baseball and music are two pretty good passions to have it works for Chip yeah <laughs> there we go see God forbid I ever start a band. Be a little terrifying. No, oh, I think you'd be a second career for you. <laughs> Some say it should be the first, but that's another story. <laughs> <laughs> Curtis Granderson <laughs> leads off for the Mets here in the third. 
Granderson struck out his first time. Kelsey, have you had a chance to hear any of uh, Chase Darnold's music? Were you able to, to download any of it last night? I have not been able to listen to any of it yet, but he did give um, people in the media. He gave us there's a little card I was holding. You couldn't see it in my hit there, but he gave us all a free download card. Yeah, we've got one upstairs oh, too. Yeah. yeah, yeah, looks like a. Well, first of all, we got the sticker for the I guess the. Back of the van. Yeah, they hung those up. They're all over the, the locker room, but um, you know, it's like old school. Freddie was saying there's one of the songs Freddie Gonzalez. He said he really likes one of those songs. But what I thought was really going to come in handy, at least for our crew, is the uh, the thing that looks like a coaster. <laughs> the car? Oh, I always need them. Our group is going to use that a lot. There we go. We can listen to it on the flight back. Yeah, it's the chasedarnoband.com slash download. As Curtis Granderson digs in, two balls, two strikes. Gwinnett just won. They're playing Toledo today. And a couple of names Braves fans will be interested in. Had a hand in the victory. Jace Peterson had a game tying hit in the 11th inning. And Ozzie Albies with a game winning hit. As Gwinnett beat Toledo today 2-1. Two to one. Right. Well, they started early. Casey Kelly was scheduled to start today. A 10-35 start. Full count pitch and Granderson takes a leadoff walk. Three walks in as many innings for Chassin today. And here's Cabrera. He tapped back to the mound. And that's not a good sign when you've only walked four in your first four starts. Maybe trying to be a little too careful with these Mets hitters. With David Wright getting the day off and that long plane ride ahead for the Mets, they move Cabrera to the number two spot. And he takes ball one outside. Runner goes and it's foul the other way. Anderson had a good jump, but he'll head back to first with an even count. And he hasn't been running much. 0 for 1 in stolen base attempts. Might have been a hit and run there. Swing and a miss. One and two. And throwing 89, 90. Now he comes back with a, good, a very good off speed breaking ball that had him out front. So curved. In the air to center. Alex throws for a moment. Now drifts back. It's over his head and over the wall. Thing went straight up in the air and straight out the center, and it's four nothing. Well, it's like Tom Glavin says: solo homers don't often beat you, but if you walk a guy in front of those home runs, then the damage is done. He liked it when he hit it. I'm like you, Chip. I didn't think he hit it that well, but he did. And he would know as Cabrera's second homer makes it a 4 0 game in the third. And here's Michael Conforto. And the Mets are doing today what they've done all year now 18 games, 36 homers. Mm -hmm. 
It's this other pinstriped team in New York that they ought to be calling the Bron be calling the Bombers. The Yankees are having an awful time scoring runs. The Mets aren't. Yankees only have one more win than the Braves do. And Alex Rodriguez got hurt last night running the bases. There's nothing going right for Joe Girardi's squad. The one two pitch is over the outside corner. Conforto is retired. There's the first out. Cespedes popped out to end a scoreless first. Darno near the stands will not have a play. Even count. Garcia can't make the play at third. So Cespedes aboard with one out. And that's rule to hit. Well, I know it's rule to hit, but it should have been an out. Should have been caught. That went between his glove and his foot. Lucas Duda will strike out his first time up. Four runs on three hits for the Mets. They've cashed in two of their three walks. Four runs. They came ahead of a home run by Rene Rivera in the second and as Drupal Cabrera here in the third. High fly ball right center field. Smith as far as he can go. Leaping try won't get it. A four run inning. The Mets have hit three two run homers. And it's a six nothing game. He'd only walked four and he's walked three today. He hadn't given up a homer and he's given up three home runs. Not just seems day. Should have been a solo homer. The play before should have been made, which would have resulted in a second out. And to put it in perspective, the Mets have hit six homers against Braves pitching in the series. The Braves have six homers all year. Ouch. Here's Walker. He popped out his first time up. Well, I give due to this. When he hits him, he doesn't mess around. They're, they're beauties. Was he the guy that hit one out to the bridge against the Braves a couple years ago? Was that Duda or somebody else for New York? No, it was uh, the first baseman. Oh, Ike, Dav Ike, Ike Davis. Davis. Ike Davis. And that is a mammoth home run. And Duda has touched off his sixth. That's the Shea Bridge. 
expands the bullpen area in right center. And out of play by Neil Walker. Well, now Chassin almost has to act like his own relief pitcher. He's got to buckle down and try to give the Braves some innings and stop him here. It's 6 0. To second. And flip to first in time. Two down. Smith's offense has been unbelievable over the last couple of weeks. After a 2 and 5 start. Record wise, their bats have come to life. And they go to San Diego for four, LA for four, Colorado for three next. That's a nice trip. And something about Steven Matz, too. His last three starts, all wins, been given 27 runs to work with, and he already has six to work with today. And there's that run difference. Two and a half to over five per game. So sometimes it is true. It's not how you pitch, but when. Yeah, it is for Matt. Yeah. I mean, he's he's good enough in his own right. Back up the middle, and Castro gloved it, but he can't do anything with that. Wilmer Flores a rare hit, only his fifth of the year, and more two-out trouble for Julius Chassin. Fooled on the pitch that he swung and one handed down the left field line for the first homer. That's how to play foul. No balls at a strike. Rivera spent last year with Tampa Bay, hit 178 in 110 games. He hit five homers. Started 87 games and threw out 23 would be base steals. So any offense he gives is a huge bonus. Yeah, 37 percent of base steals he caught last year. Great number, and not too many guys throwing out more than he has. This one back to the mound and flag down, and that will retire the side. A leadoff walk and a two run homer, a one out single, a two run homer, and just like that, New York leads by six.
top moments in Turner Field history. Today it's May 24th, 2007. Mets at Braves. John Smoltz with his 200th career win, and it came at the expense of Tom Glavin, who gave up a solo home run to Matt Diaz. John Smoltz, the only pitcher in big league history with 200 wins and 150 saves. Here's to 20 years. Brought to you by Synovus, the bank of here. That was a great game. Great game. One to nothing. Win it on a homer. Both guys pitch well. Old friends going at it. And a milestone for Smoltz. So the Braves have dug themselves a six run hole after three innings. They have one hit, and that was by their pitcher, Julius Chassin. Steven Matz can fill up the strike zone. And he does just that. Nothing in one to Adonis Garcia. What a luxury it must be for a starter to, as you said, get so much run support, but he can read the stat sheet too. He's got to figure that home runs aren't going to beat him. Braves have hit six as a team. As Cabrera makes a beautiful play, one out. Yeah, he's only allowed two in 24 innings now, but you know when a team is not hit, hitting the ball out of the ballpark, you can be a little more aggressive, especially behind in the count. And in this ballpark, even though the Mets are making it look play awfully small this year, this is a good park to pitch in. Just think what they're going to do when it's hot in this place. That's terrifying to think about. As Freddie Freeman's the batter at our Georgia Lottery hitting the jackpot feature. Last 12 games for Freddie, he has come alive. OPS over a thousand. Only three RBIs in there in that hot streak, so. He'd get some guys on base in front of him. Nick's been getting on base a lot, and Nick's been driving in a lot of runs from the bottom of the order when they were on earlier in this series. Yeah, the Braves went back to a standard National League lineup card today with a pitcher batting ninth. Mm -hmm. Came up a couple of times where the pitcher was in a big spot at the plate with runners in scoring position, and it cost him a chance to add on some runs. As this one's hit toward Wilmer Flores at third, he'll vacuum that up. And two are out. If you're just joining us, no Nick Markakis for the ball club today. Nick had to head back home for a family matter. And uh, all of us, Nick, hope you and your crew are doing well. As the Braves play a man down against the Mets in game three. Here's Jeff Francoeur. Six ground outs, four strikeouts for Mets so far. Frank Coors caught me off guard last night. We we're in the clubhouse. He walks up and he goes, How's my eye? And I'm looking at it and I look fine. He said, No, I've walked four times. How's my eye? <laughs> I said, oh, yeah, you're right. Only 13 all last year. You're on a record pace. It's one thing you love about Jeff. He is able to laugh at himself very quickly, very easily. As Cabrera at short from the outfield grass, one smooth motion takes care of Jeff Rancourt, and Matz is wearing out the infield grass. Three up, three down. Big lead after three and a half.
Atlanta Braves Baseball is sponsored by your local Toyota dealers, Let's Go Places, the Georgia Lottery, and Zaxby's Indescribably Good. Six nothing New York. They've hit three two run homers off Julius Chassin so far today. The man on the mound for New York is Steven Matz. Four innings of one hit ball, and he'll lead things off. Little tapper. Adonis in. Gets the hop. Closed first in time. One down. A strikeout, a walk, and a run for Curtis Granderson. That's taken out a little offensive frustration on Chassin today. Last night they did not get a runner to second base the entire game. That's how in command Matt Whistler and Arodis Vizcaino were for the Braves. Yeah, and remember that all their runs in game one of this series came in the first inning, four spot. So they had not scored since the first inning of game one. One ball, one strike. Mentioned the Mets have a long western trip coming up. But a lot of folks around baseball are going to have the first game of their next homestand circle. That's because they play the Washington Nationals for the first time. May 17th, 18th, and 19th. Nice play, Ibar diving and a good throw to first to get Granderson. Two out. Heck of a play. The Braves are shifting more. It's paid more dividends than not. Nice job to hang on to it. Two quick outs. And here's Cabrera who hit the home run to center last time up. Washington let one slip away yesterday. Jonathan Papelbon gave up two in the ninth in Kansas City, and the Royals came from behind to win. Line drive to right. Darno's got it. And that'll retire the side. We head to the fifth inning. Nice play by Eric Ibar. He gloves, he holds on, and he gets his man at first. Six nothing Mets.
Swirling mist and rain now starts in New York as we head to the fifth inning. Steven Matz has allowed one hit. And Tyler Flowers greets him for the Braves. Six nothing, New York the lead. And if you thought Matz was working quickly before, watching this inning, trying to make sure he gets three outs to make it an official contest. And that's off the plate. I shortchanged on Jonathan Pampelbaum a run last night. My apologies for that. He gave up three in the ninth. Now he's had a rough time of it. Phillies touched him up. His old team with the other blown save. This rain's getting here a little early. It's supposed to be about three o'clock. Two balls, two strikes. Back off the screen by the Braves catcher. Braves are three and three on this road trip, but I I don't know. I'd have to go way back to find a worse road trip than this one. Weather-wise, you mean? Travel-wise. Oh yeah. Uh, the trip to Boston, then the overnight to Chicago, play a day game the next day. Miserable weather. We've had rain and cold every day. Strike three inside corner. There's number five for Mats. One man down. And here's Darno who popped out. Well, the weather in Atlanta is supposed to be nice. I don't know what all of us will do when we finally see the sun for the first time in eight days. Probably be blinded, right? A shot toward left, Conforto to his left. There's a good swing to her out. And here's Castro who took strike three today. Mets trying for their sixth straight series win. The Braves would be thrilled beyond belief to come home with a four and three trip considering where they played and the conditions that Joe just mentioned. But they've got a lot of work to do if that's going to happen today. They're down six nothing. And inside ball one to Castro. Got the Diamondbacks this weekend. We've got their big three: Granke, Miller, and Patrick Corbin. That trio's three and eight though this year, and the Diamondbacks team ERA is over five. And a team that many thought was a sexy pick to win the West, still could, has been outscored by 24 runs so far. I was reading a story about them that their schedule's been very difficult here at the beginning, too. They were hoping to fix that on this next road trip. Matz was efficient, and now it's official. He has struck out six.
Jerome, thank you very much. It'll be exciting to have Ender and Ciarte yeah. back. Yeah, that's good to hear. As we told you, Ozzie Albies and Jace Peterson had run scoring hits for Gwinnett as they beat Toledo today, two to one. And now Chassin to work against the middle of the Mets order. Conforto gets it started and takes inside ball one. Michael has walked and has struck out. Made the jump from double A to the big leagues last year for the Mets. And Sandy Alderson had a very busy week. Brought this kid up. He acquired Cespedes. They traded with the Braves to get Kelly Johnson and Juan Uribe. They added Eric O'Flaherty and Tyler Clippard. And that just shows you how quickly aggressive moves and the right moves can turn your fortunes around. The Mets were hanging around 500 at the time of those deals. Well, and he was an outstanding college player. Not a whole lot unlike Dansby Swanson. That slap toward left, slicing away from Frank Coor and a foul ball. Played in a difficult conference in the Pac-12, so he was used to stiff competition. And once he showed what he could do at Double A, they were very comfortable bringing him up, and he did not let them down. Trio of two run homers for the Mets today. Mets yanked foul at first. Quick bat. The ball was riding in on him and he was able to pull it foul. Strike three. There's that backup pitch. Conforto struck out for a second time today, and that's four on the day for Chassin. Yeah, and both times looking. Gave up on it. And came back. Cespedes has a single and a run scored. He crossed the plate after Lucas Duda's two run homer a couple of innings ago. And two. It's been a trend in Major League Baseball with free agent signings to offer long term big dollar deals, but with opt outs in those contracts. Jason Hayward has such a deal with the Cubs. Cespedes has a similar provision with the Mets. He could be a free agent after this year if he so chooses. Talk about a win win for the player. Yeah, I was just going to say, too bad the owners. The teams don't have that same option. Yeah. <laughs> After two years, it's like, oh yeah, no. Yeah, we don't mind. like this deal. Have a hit, the, hit the road. Yeah. yeah. I think of one that comes to mind right away. No balls, two strikes. Off the end of the bat, and Freeman stretches out, makes the play, moving toward the first base line. Quick feet, old twinkle toes over there. Using all of his reach to get to it. Great extension. So Chassin is set down six in a row. Here's Lucas Duda. Strike call. Due to six homers, 17 knocked in now. That 
Caught a corner. One and two. You know, Chassin spots do up second in the sixth inning, but I think I'd be inclined just to let him hit for himself and stay out there as long as he's comfortable. It's not like anybody that pinch hits is going to hit a six run homer. Duda drives one toward left center. Smith on the run. Warning track. Wall can't get it. Lucas Duda has homer to left center field. His second homer of the day. Going after this ball. Kind of bending over, grabbing his knee a little bit. You can see that Tyler Flowers wanted that ball on the ground. It wasn't. Got airborne in a hurry. 14th multi homer game for Lucas Duda. A two run shot and a solo shot. And the Mets lead 7 zip. Four New York homers today. I just can't believe the ball is jumping like it is. I, I'm not taking anything away from the hitters. I know they're hitting them very solidly, but in this weather, that one's down the right field line and foul. My, my only guess is if the wind's blowing straight in, it hits the back part of the stadium and then cycles back out. Maybe because the flags at the top of the stadium, you can see, are starched. We like to call that a cyclonic effect. I've heard that before. Mm -hmm. How about this stat from our Buckle Jenkins, our stat man? It's the fourth time this year the Mets have had a four homer game. What a difference. That quick strike capability has for the club. Yeah, I, I did not see this coming from this ball club. Not just today, but over the last two weeks, and what they've done. 38 homers since April 15th for the Mets. And with no disrespect to the Colorado Rockies. Just think about what the Mets might do in a three game series in that place at the end of the road trip. Yikes. Well, they've got that to look forward to. It's trying to chase down their 17th win for Terry Collins. They'll start play today a game and a half behind the Nationals. And that missed inside. Neil Walker, full count. Action's begun in the Braves' bullpen. Bud Norris is up. And Walker earns a base on balls with two outs. Four walks, four homers is a bad pitcher's combination. Yes, it is. Which is a disappointment, especially to Junis Chassin, who came off that win against Boston at Fenway Park. Flores had an infield hit last time. He's also walked and scored.
One ball, two strikes. Ripped into left center field. Smith on a sprint. He's not going to get that before it gets to the wall. Walker around third. He's going to come home and score. It's a double for Wilmer Flores. And the Mets lead 8 0. Flores had four hits all year. He's got two today. Yeah, I know he's off to a slow start, but if the Mets don't want him around, I think. There'd be a lot of teams that would be willing to take him. When he hits the ball again, he's one of those guys. Sounds like he hit it with a lead pipe. So that's the end of the line for Julius Chassin, as Joe said earlier, and I think very fairly he just didn't have it today. Three two-run homers and a solo shot, along with four walks. He's on the short end of an eight-run game. Georgia's best Chevy dealers, Georgia Power, and Xfinity. X1 from Xfinity will change the way you experience sports. A score to match the weather from the Braves' perspective as the Mets continue here in the bottom of the fifth inning. And Bud Norris will come on and try to get this thing to the, to the sixth. This will be his second relief appearance. After he was sent to the bullpen following on start at Boston, where he only went an inning and a third and gave up six runs. He pitched in relief here a couple of nights ago. Did a good job. Two and a third innings. Gave up a couple of walks, but no runs or hits. Rene Rivera hit a home run back in the second inning. His first home run since July 8th against Joe Blanton and the Royals. It was right down the left field line, and the Mets jumped out 2 0. Cabrera and Duda have added two run homers. Lucas Duda hit his second home run in this inning, a solo shot to left center field. Morris just doubled home Neil Walker that chased Julius Chassin and now it's a 1 1 count for the Mets catcher Darno and Freeman no plays in the stands hey nice catch we talked about the Diamondbacks coming to town beginning Friday night Second opportunity for Braves fans to see Aaron Blair. He did so great his last time out, both times out, really. It'll be his second home start as he draws Zach Greinke Friday night. 
Fireworks night. Ron goes against Shelby Miller on Saturday. Julio's pitched two great games back to back. And then Fulton Evich with a chance to redeem himself after a rough first outing. Really just one inning. Rough one inning. He pitches Sunday against Corbin. That's in the air to center. Smith again drifts back. And he'll make the catch shy of the track. Two more runs for the Mets. A homer, a walk, and a double. And we go to inning number six. Brought to you by Georgia's best Chevy dealers. And uh, it's pretty simple at this point, really, it's all Mets. Uh, Steven Matz has blanked the Braves on only one hit, and that was a hit by the pitcher, Chassin, when he was in the ball game. But home runs galore for the Mets today, and two by Lucas Duda. That last run they scored on the double by Flores was the first run they produced in this series that wasn't produced by a homer. So it's an eight run game now for New York with Ivar Norris and Malik Smith coming up. Again the luxury for Mats not facing a powerful lineup. And an eight run lead. And he can do that the rest of the game if he wants. One ball two strikes. He falls into the rich get richer category for New York already a club that has Harvey they have Syndergaard they have DeGrom and all about Bartolo Colon Logan Verrett has been a nice addition to this staff and there's one name we haven't talked about at all and that's Zach Wheeler who's coming back. Yeah, I keep hearing June it sounds about right. Strike three at the knees. That's seven strikeouts for Mets. But Norris will hit for himself and stay in the game. His conditions continue to worsen. In case you wondered, Mats's career high in strikeouts is nine. He has seven, and he is. Pitching almost effortlessly. Pop to the right side. Duda will not get there. Bounce off the top of the dugout. It's 
it's one and two. Strike three, that's number eight. Matt's a struck out for the last five hitters. And three of them have been looking. Just a nice, easy get over curveball. Alex Smith is 0 for 2. He struck out looking to start the game. Five of his eight strikeouts have been looking. Matz was born in Stony Brook, New York, went to high school at Ward Melville on Long Island, and became the first Met pitcher born in New York to start a playoff game in this franchise's history. And that's tough play. He got there, 360 spin, and got Malik Smith. That was an athletic play by Steven Matz. Three up, three down in the Atlanta sixth. Academy Sports and Outdoors. Right stuff, low price every day. Stephen Matz has done it all for the Mets today. That was really a nice athletic play, as you said, Chip. Be able to turn and not just throw blindly. So check out Matz, no batting gloves. On a raw day. And Morris greets him with a fast strike. That's had an unbelievable big league debut. He had four RBIs in a game. First one in the major leagues. The sixth pitcher in Mets history with a four RBI game last done by Dwight Gooden in 1990. And as I said with two lost years to arm problems coming back from surgery. I'm sure this young man appreciates every moment he has in the major leagues. Perhaps more than some others his age. Yeah there were some people that. Had some raised eyebrows about coming to the big leagues with a New York team. Left handed pitcher with a lot of promise from New York and given number 32. And what inherent problem, uh, inherent pressures there might be associated with that. Yet to be determined if he's Sandy Koufax Jr. Looks like him today though, doesn't yes, he? Yes, he does. 
Back to the top of the order, Curtis Granderson, 0 for 2 with a walk. Those have one hit from their pitcher. And since departed, Julius Chassin today. Let's have eight runs on seven hits. And that's outside, one ball, no strikes. I know it's way too early to start talking about who's going to win the Eastern Division race, especially with the Mets and Nationals not having played a game yet. But we've seen both of those teams now six games. Yeah. I'd, like, I'd like to get your thoughts on how these two clubs match up. Well, and the Nationals handled the Braves. Another oh. great play by Ibar, who held on. Man. That's the second time he's robbed Granderson. The way the Nationals handled the Braves won all the games, they were impressive. They got good pitching. They were playing better defense than we had seen them play in the last several years. They'd tanked that up. And I really thought they would be the team to beat in the division by a wide margin. But that was at a time when the Mets weren't hitting. And we all knew that. New York's pitching would give them a chance in virtually every game. They're starting pitching so strong that they would be right there if they got any run support. Well, guess what? Yeah. It's hard to think that this Mets team can maintain this power pace they're on right now, but even so, they're capable of scoring more runs than they did last year, and I think that that makes them. A whole lot better than they were last year. They didn't have a great first half. They couldn't score. No. That's why they made all those trades. Right. And that was what their fans were going crazy about. We've got this great pitching and we're losing every day two to one. Yeah. Yeah, when I when I was saying the things I said about Washington early on, it was because I just didn't expect New York to hit. And a hit batsman. As Drupal Cabrera will make his way to first base as Norris plunks him on a 2 2 pitch. And here you go. Here's the Mets before the deadline and right after the deadline. 16 games over 500 after they acquired UNS Cespedes and company. And he made a huge difference in their ball club with the tear he went on. But you know you can't you can't underestimate the confidence they gained with what they did not just getting to the postseason and winning the division by seven games but getting to the World Series. That was my next question for you. You contrast that with the Nationals who some say was a, a disappointing club last year. I don't know if that's fair because. Washington only had their starting lineup together for two games. Right. So they never really got under Matt Williams to play the way they thought they would play. Still, though, they didn't get there and were supposed to. Yeah. The Mets did. They know they can do it. I wonder if the Nationals are wondering, can we do it? Yeah, they, the, the Nationals have a lot to, to learn, I think, under Dusty Baker. He's the guy that can get that part across to them. And uh, kind of instill that, I hate to use the word culture of winning, but that, that confidence that you can go out there and win every night, that you expect to win every night. Two balls, no strikes for Conforto, who's struck out twice and walked once. And out of play foul. I love. Uh, Familia at the end of games for the Mets. I'm okay on Papelbon. I'm not a huge Papelbon guy, but he's good. I mean, he's in the top 10 in saves right. in baseball history, so you got to respect that. I think one advantage the Mets have to, I think their club seems to be, at least on paper, a little deeper than Washington's. Yes. Cespedes goes down. You can throw Lagares out yeah. there. 
Flores. Yeah. Flores for David Wright. Yeah. Plawecki for Darno. Yeah, they're going to have to do some work on their on their catching. They got to figure out a way to get Darno back and healthy. And that'll be a problem spot. But again, the way they're hitting, like they need, need somebody to catch and throw. They don't have to worry about hitting. And that's the rub. Darno can hit, but he can't throw because his yeah. shoulders messed yeah. up. So even that was hurting him though to swing. Hurting his shoulder to cut it loose. So again, that first showdown in mid-May, May 17th, 18th, and 19th, Mets versus Nationals pulled into right side foul. Scherzer, Strasburg, Gio Gonzalez, they match up. Three good ones. Yep. And they've been there. Strasburg, I think, is kind of the the wild card here because I think he's on his way to having a, a big, big year. He got six first inning runs against Chris Medlin today. That'll help. So Strasburg ought to win today. And if he does, it'll be a 5 0 start for him. It's his walk year. Yeah, I, I just, when I saw him, he was a different guy. He had a couple more pitches that he was using. Uh, not everything had to be 95 to 98. I thought he looked, I thought he looked better than Scherzer when we saw him. And that's saying something for a man that threw two no hitters last year. Right. Max Scherzer. Full count pitch. And that caught the inside corner. Conforto is struck out looking three times today. Cabrera's left stranded, and we head to the seventh. It's time for today's State Farm instant replay. And there are some instant replays here for strikeouts. Steven Matz tonight, this afternoon, has been outstanding. Mixing his pitches, fastball, breaking ball, change up. And starts Adonis here in the seventh inning with that backdoor breaking ball. He struck out eight. Well, the way the Mets are pitching and the way their rotation stacking up, the Braves are finding out what the rest of the National League felt like when they played them. You knew you were going to get one of the three at least in every series, many times two, and sometimes all three of their big guns. Mm -hmm. Which means you're seldom going to have any long losing streaks because they have in DeGrom and Syndergaard and this guy, and if Matt Harvey can get turned around, Four aces, and then oh, by the way, Bartolo Colon, who was magnificent the other day. Well, look at last night. Matt Whistler throws a one-hit shutout for eight innings, but it and, and the Braves, I'll say, quote unquote, beat up on Matt Harvey. They got three runs, 
So it wasn't all that ugly and got eight hits off of him. So you know you got to pitch a good ball game because chances are your team's not going to score much. And with the Mets ability to score runs early in the game. I'll bet there have been a lot of games just like this one where after one or two innings it's over because their staff just shuts you down. You know, they have really done a good job of that of giving their starting pitching a lot of breathing room early. That's out towards second. And the throw to first takes care of Garcia and that's how the seventh inning gets underway. Nine ground outs eight strikeouts for Mats. The eight strikeouts one shy of his career high. And I mean incomplete command. Freddie Freeman's bounced out to third twice and nearly got hit. In fact he did get hit. All help appreciated. Freeman plunked with one out. Hopefully just grazed his jersey. Jeff Rancour is tapped back to the mound. He's grounded out to short. He's only had to work out of the stretch to one batter. Fly ball to right. That'll chase Granderson back. He's shy of the track with plenty of room. Two outs. Yeah, if you're going to get hit by a pitch in the major leagues, that's the kind you want to have a button popper. Yeah, it almost went in his jersey. <laughs> and here's Tyler Flowers. He has struck out twice. Another team to keep an eye on our division is the Marlins. They're playing real good baseball right now under Don Mattingly. Marlins have won eight of ten. They're back over 500. At 13 wins, 12 losses. You know they did a, a weird thing. The Braves went to Miami and swept them, and then Miami went to L.A. and swept the Dodgers. Of course, Miami playing without D. Gordon, and they've been doing some experimenting with their batting order, trying to fill that leadoff spot. They've had Ichiro up there. They've had Derek Dietrich up there. And they've also had their catcher JT Real Muto batting first. Well, we've talked about Real Muto a lot that he's an athlete that happens to catch. And Dietrich can hit. He's not anywhere near the defensive player that D. Gordon is. Marlins are home to Arizona today. De La Rosa for the D backs. Jose Fernandez goes for Miami. And then the Braves open up a series with the Snakes beginning Friday night. Two and two. Rip toward left. Conforto is there and he goes to an E to make the catch. And that retires the side. Seventh inning stretch on a raw day in New York. Eight nothing behind Stephen Matz. That's in front.
We'll recap tonight's action. We'll check in with Freddie Gonzalez and head to the clubhouse to hear from the Braves players. Braves live after the game presented by Xfinity. Sadly, not much good news to report tonight, or today, I should say. Four Mets homers, part of an eight-run barrage against Julius Chassin, who had a, a clunker today. But Morris now on in relief of him as we head to the Mets half of the seventh inning. While he continues to warm up, don't want to let this opportunity pass us by. It's Eddie Perez's birthday today. Great Braves bullpen coach and self-proclaimed best-looking guy in the ballpark turns 48. Today. Well, it's it's in his contract. Anytime we mention his name, you got to say most handsome guy on the team, right? Senor Perez. How old you say he was? Well, the media guide says 48, Joe. Wow. <laughs> says, but this leads off the seventh inning. It's flipping through this day in baseball history during the break. One of the best days I ever had in the major leagues happened six years ago today when the Braves got a tour of the U.S. Capitol. When the U.S. Senate invited Bobby Cox to come visit, they honored Bobby as he was preparing to retire at the end of that season. U.S. Senators Johnny Isaacson and Jay Rockefeller of Georgia and West Virginia, respectively, presented Bobby Cox framed copies of their statements submitted into the congressional record honoring the Braves manager. 51 seasons in professional baseball. That was quite an honor to stand in one of those Senate offices and have as that one's hit by Cespedes in the right center field for a base hit. To have Saxby Chambliss and Johnny Isaacson and Dick Durbin and Harry Reid all stop by to pay their respects to Bobby Cox and Jay Rockefeller is a big Braves fan. And a wonderful testament to the Braves manager. He said he brings out the best in his players and exemplifies what the sport of baseball is supposed to be about hustle, grit, loyalty, and determination. That was a, a special day for everybody. And well deserved. So Cespedes at first as the Mets go back to work here in the seventh inning. He's got a two hit day. Bobby's watching the game today. I hope he's someplace warm. Yes. Two homers, three RBIs for Lucas Duda. And he's thinking about a third homer as he launches that one into the seats. This is one of the guys that caught fire when the Mets made those moves too because he went to Terry Collins thinking that he was about to lose his job when the Mets got Kelly Johnson and asked Terry am I, am I losing my job and he said not if you start hitting and he took off. Yeah if you ask Terry Collins a, an honest question he'll give you an honest answer. Right. Yeah, he's may not be what you want to hear always, but he'll give it to you straight. Shift on for Duda, and that's up and away. One ball and two strikes. Off day for the Braves tomorrow. Arizona in for the weekend. We're off Monday the 9th, and then we'll get a look at the Phillips as this one's hit a mile high. Darno and Smith at the Malice. And he makes the catch. Darno got a little too close for Malik's comfort, but he made the play for the first out. Malix is calling for it all the way. He had his glove out, waving him off. Chase was doing the same thing, and it wasn't until the last second that Chase heard him to get out of the way. Oh mercy that was close.
Neil Walker 0 for 2. Base on balls and scored ahead of the Wilmer Flores double back in the fifth. And a strike. It's a quick stop at home for the Braves. Just six games, seven days. And then we head out on another long road trip. Three cities in ten days. And it's going to be a doozy of a trip as well. Three at Kansas City against the world champion Royals four against the Pirates in Pittsburgh and then three in Philly to face as we showed you earlier the staff that has more strikeouts than any other pitching staff in Major League Baseball. One ball one strike and outside ball two. The final homestand of May features Milwaukee. The Marlins and the Giants come in for their long visit, a four game series that begins May 30th. Walker was a little late, two balls and two strikes. He's done a good job on Walker in this series. He was red hot coming in. Does not have a hit in this series. 0 for 8. Toward center. Smith on a sprint to the warning track has room. And Walker is out number two. Don't forget on Tuesday, May 10th, for the first time for the general public, Sun Trust Park season tickets will go on sale. The prices begin as low as $6 per game for A-list members, and almost half of the seats can be secured for just $20 a game. Mark your calendar for May 10th and visit Braves.com slash SunTrust Park and learn more. Alex Smith's going to need a new pair of shoes come Friday. He's worn out this pair today. He's been going coast to coast trying to cover right center to left center with all the balls that have been hit by the Mets today. Perfect day at the plate for Wilmer Flores. He's knocked in and has scored a run. Eight runs eight hits for New York no runs. One hit for the Braves. The Braves have only had two base runners. Base hit by Chassin and Freeman when he was hit by the pitch. I'm sure it's happened. I just asked Drew to check this for us. When's the last time a team threw a one hitter and then had a one hitter thrown <laughs> at him the next day? Yeah. It's happened with no hitters before. And that's the fate of the Braves to this point. Two balls and a strike just past three o'clock in New York. And now three and one for Flores. Well, Norris throws out a lot of pitches. That one wasn't even in the dirt. I should say a lot of baseballs. In the air right. And Darno is there. And that retires the side. We head to the eighth. Braves looking for their second hit and their first run.
concert, all part of Coca-Cola and Delta Airlines Summer Concert Series. Go to Braves.com slash concerts and get your tickets today. Steven Metz, the other half of the story for the Mets, who've hit four homers today. Metz has allowed one hit. He struck out eight, one shy of his career high. And he goes to work in inning number eight, having thrown just 91 pitches. Mets didn't get a runner to second base last night. The Braves have not tonight, today. Darno. He had a 6 0 lead at the end of three innings, and since then he's just been in a rocking chair. There is action in the Mets bullpen as he's closing in on 100 pitches. 110 is his season high that came in his last start against the Giants. And pulled foul. Two and two. And I don't blame Bo Porter for olaying that ground ball on this cold day. Granderson retreats and right, still going back, and he got there. Good running catch by Curtis Granderson for the first out. Boy, that is the second hard hit ball by Darno today. Robbed both times. And especially here by Granderson. This was going to be a triple. By the time he caught this, Darno was halfway to second. Nice play. Way upstairs for Daniel Castro, who has struck out twice. That's a little reminiscent of last night, too. The Mets hit some balls hard. They just happen to be right at people. Popped up toward right, but into the seats. No stress whatsoever. It's funny, last night for Whistler, his most pitches were in the first inning. I think it was maybe 19. This is the longest outing for Mats this year. Now seven and a third innings. He's trying to win his fourth consecutive outing. One and two. Well, remember last night when Cabrera was fouling off all those pitches and running his Whistler's pitch count up? It's kind of what's happening this inning to Mats. I know Terry Collins is pacing over there. Doesn't want him to get too high on the count. Try to give him a chance to finish the inning, but not if the Braves keep spoiling a lot of pitches. Seven and two thirds innings is Matz's career high. And another foul ball.
to short. Herrera has to charge. He'll throw on the run, and they got it. What a stretch by Duda. Pretty much did the splits over there. You wouldn't expect that big horse to be that flexible. I have ours off two. A comebacker and a strikeout. Line and a base hit to left. There's the second Atlanta hit. And the Braves will go to the bench. And you know, this man appreciates this moment. Matt Tuiasa Sopo. Last big league action was 2013. And Terry Collins says that's the end of the line for Stephen Matz, a career high tying seven and two thirds. During the final season at Turner Field, save off the regular game price and custom build your four game plan or pick a popular plan like bobblehead, Friday night fireworks, or Sunday kids' day plans by visiting Braves.com slash four game. We will be talking about the performance of Stephen Matz on Braves Live, presented by Xfinity after our ball game, and Joe with good reason. Seven and two thirds innings of two hit ball today. Yeah, it was outstanding. Probably would have gotten to finish the inning had Ibar not gotten the base hit. But a chance for Tuyasa Sopo to get his first big league at bat in a long time. Very happy for him, and I know his family is very proud of him for sticking with it to get back. He'll face Jim Henderson, and that pitch missed low. One ball, no strikes. Henderson throws hard, sinker, slider. 14 strikeouts and eight plus innings. Former closer. I had a good cut at that pitch and fouled it back. His last big league hit August 28th, 2013. Six two two thirty five twenty nine years old now. And he didn't get it one ball and two strikes. Bruno has 
heart is thumping. Trying to calm himself down a little bit. Ooh. Rivera held it there for a moment, but it was low, I suppose. Yeah, I, with Jim Wolf's strike zone today, that's kind of a break for Matt. He'll get another pitch. Brave signed Tui Asasopo last November. Was reassigned to minor league camp pretty early on March the 5th. But you recall at the start of the series, the Braves made seven separate transactions and brought four new faces to the big league club, including Matt Tui Asasopo. And this one skied towards center. And that'll be playable for Cespedes, and that will retire the side. Braves out of luck in the eighth inning. Trail 8 nothing to the Mets. It's time for today's Toyota Key Plays. Well, it's all long balls today. Rivera got it started with one. Dudas hit two. Cabrera, you just saw his launch to center field. Dudas was one of his was to center field. Eight runs, seven have come from homers. 12 runs in the series for the Mets, 11 of the 12 result of homers. Rene Rivera hit the first one today. I think that shocked everybody in the ballpark. <laughs> Did me. He didn't hit it hard, but he dropped the barrel of the bat and drove it down the left field line right over the delta sign for a two run, two out second inning homer. That was pretty much all Stephen Metz has needed. Servinka will try to continue his consecutive scoreless outings. He's got 11 straight. That's the longest streak to begin a career by a Braves pitcher in Atlanta history. Previously, that record held by Mike Stanton. There's now a big time radio superstar. Mm -hmm. Does good work. Does do a good job. There's another guy that had a good streak going, Shea Simmons. I know Shea's been doing his rehab coming back from Tommy John surgery last year. I wonder, haven't heard anything on his progress lately. 
Pop fly foul. So, John Capolella, I know you're watching the game. We still have some time. Shoot us a text. We'd like to know what <laughs> Shea Simmons is up to. What a nice addition he would be to the bullpen. Get him back. Two balls, two strikes. Foul at third by Rene Rivera. If memory serves me right, Shea was called up from Double A, wasn't he? Did he come from Mississippi when he first made the scene? Let me look back into the book, your, of, the your, book of knowledge. Your archives? Yes, as they called them. Let's see here. Simmons. Uh, let's see. Yep, he did come up from Miss Man. I tell you what, every now and then your synapses fire. Which is perfect. It has something to do with temperature. <laughs> <laughs> well, if we, if we do the games in Alaska, we're going to be in good yeah. shape for SDA. Yeah, he was really called, up, called up May 31st, 2014. Through three pitches and struck out the first battery faced against the Marlins. So make a miss low, full count. Away again. We'll do a full count pitch again. Strike three, a breaking ball. Rivero's on his way to first base. Steady's out number one in the eighth. How about that big hook? Cutters and curveballs. That'll be the name of his restaurant when he opens it up. And that is a beaut. Here's Eric Campbell. Another valuable bench piece for Terry Collins. Campbell can play third, he can play first. If there's a real nasty left hander out there, he can give Lucas Duda a day off and there play over there for a day's work. Only 11 at bats so far for him this year. We saw Campbell play a lot last season when David Wright was sidelined with that spinal stenosis problem. Breaking ball has him behind in the count. One and two. So if this score holds, the Braves will fall to seven and twenty for the year. And as we said, a brief pit stop at home where Atlanta's really got to pick it up. Shockingly, the Braves are 1 and 12 at Turner Field. Yeah, that's hard to figure. Downstairs. Full count. 9 2 Washington leads Kansas City. That's in the third inning. Chris Medlin was scheduled to start for the Royals today. Giants have fallen in Cincinnati 7 4. The Reds did, by the way, set the record of 21 straight games with a run allowed by their bullpen yesterday. Cubs 5, Pirates 2 in the seventh in Pittsburgh. That game started before this one. And Cervenka issues a one out walk to Campbell. Let me go back to the top of the order. Dodgers are in Milwaukee leading 2 1. That game's in the fifth inning. Had a big game. Excuse me, that's the Angels in Milwaukee. I beg your pardon. The Angels fell 8 5 yesterday. And 
Junior Guerra is the man on the mound for Milwaukee. Interesting story. He was a man suspended a few years ago, 50 games for an illegal substance. He's pitched in Venezuela. Two years ago, was pitching in Italy. And the Brewers scooped him up and he's picked up a win. That kid Nelson they've got is a top notch starter too. Jimmy Jimmy Nelson. Yeah. Well he's good. I mentioned the Dodgers they were in Tampa Bay and won 10 five yesterday. Check swing Granderson went around ball in the dirt and Campbell is on his way to second base after the strikeout two outs. Second on a wild pitch. And here's Azdrubal Cabrera. He's had a good day. Homer and two RBIs. Homer was hit left handed. Came into the game hitting 320 left handed, 231 right handed. It was just three for 13, not many at bats from his side. Speed pitch caught the corner. Cabrera didn't like it. Nothing in two. Stop by Tyler. He didn't get his glove turned over to a backhand. He had still caught it on a short hop. Swing and a miss. Cervenka takes care of Cabrera. In fact, he struck out the side with a walk thrown in. Hunter Cervenka continues his good work out of the pen, and we're off to the ninth. MLB.com at bat app stay up to the moment at any moment with game day live game video highlights stat cast news and more download MLB.com at bat the number one app for live baseball on your phone and your tablet. Don't forget big day coming up Tuesday May 10th 
season tickets go on sale at SunTrust Park for the first time for the general public. Season tickets start as little as six dollars per game for A-list members and almost half of those seats can be secured for under twenty dollars per game. May 10th is the day. Go to Braves.com slash SunTrust Park and learn more. That's Addison Reed who will pitch the ninth. Low 90s fastball a slider. He too has been a closer at times. He's got good strikeout to innings pitched ratio. Sub 200 average left and right. Now the trade by the Mets they got him August 30th and the importance of that date is he had to be on the Mets roster before September 1st for playoff eligibility. Reed was a former college teammate of Steven Strasburg at Arizona State. Where Clem Diamond didn't graduate. San Diego State. Yeah. One ball, one strike. For Malik Smith. Check swing and into the Braves dugout foul. Everybody all right? Almost got Carlos. Has been bothered with a bad leg the last couple of days. This cold weather hasn't helped him. And back our way, foul. Still one ball, two strikes. Used to be called lumbago. Uh, for him, it's probably bum lego. <laughs> One two pitch and a swing and a miss. Malik Smith to an E is down on strikes for the second time today. And there's out number one in the ninth. Braves fans, if you can't watch the games on TV, now you can stream them live on your mobile device. Just go to your app store and download the free Fox Sports Go app. Log in and stream the Braves wherever you go. Hole for three day for Adonis, including a strikeout. Steven Matz was in complete command, had a lot of runs to play with early. As Joe said, it was 6 0 after three, and he could just rock and fire the rest of the day. Graves have been held to two hits as Duda gives chase and runs out of real estate. Yeah, eight strikeouts for him, one just now for Reed on the day. And no walks. Yeah. Mets have not issued a free pass. Freeman did get hit by a pitch. Swing and a miss. Two outs. In fact, Mats was so dominant he only had one three ball count the entire day. Wow. And Braves down to their last out in New York. And it's Freddie Freeman who's 0 for 2. And as Joe said, hit by a pitch last time up. Thirty one thousand plus today. Rain soaked and chilled to the bone but eight runs. Has warmed him up. That's fouled at the plate. And the Braves down to their final strike. Freeman shoots one into right on an 0-2 pitch. You know what? That's what you expect to see, and you do see from players and hitters like Freddie. No matter what the score is, what inning it is, how many outs there are, they're not going to give away an at bat. Still trying to get their hits. Popped up again, right side by Francoeur. Duda gives chase, takes a peek from him to play. This guy Reed is really tough on right-handers. The way his ball runs back into them, sinking. Tied up Garcia when he struck him out.
Jeff had a good rip at that 93 mile an hour gas, but fouled it back. It's one and two. Ball game. Reed strikes out the side in the ninth. The Mets hit four homers, and Stephen Matz was magnificent over a career high seven and two thirds innings with eight strikeouts, one three ball count. And the Mets win their sixth consecutive series. They hand the Braves their third shutout by a final score of eight nothing. Glad to talk about. We'll do that right after this.